racing at the age of 20, won the middleweight title in April. Tonight, he makes the first defense of that title, 45 wins on his resume. He'll try to avenge the loss from last year to Paul Williams, 39 and one with 27 knockouts. The former two-time welterweight champion of the world. Bob Pop, along with Max Kellerman as we get set for the start of tonight's main event here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Max, you had a chance to be in Dallas last week and call the fight and again get a chance to watch it again here tonight. But you've had a week to think about it. Your thoughts of what transpired last week? Well, Manny Pacquiao doesn't just beat bigger men. He beats them up. Thank you, boxing gods, for Manny Pacquiao. But they've been the right bigger men. Let's be very clear about this. Both of the following statements are true. Manny Pacquiao is one of the very greatest fighters who's ever lived. And Manny Pacquiao has been matched very well recently. There's nothing wrong with smart matchmaking. But top rank Pacquiao's promoter has recently floated names for Pacquiao's next opponent. They've included Shane Mosley, who's clearly past his prime. Miguel Cotto, who Pacquiao's already beaten up. Not acceptable. Who might be acceptable? the winner of Bradley Alexander in January on HBO. The winner of this fight tonight, Williams Martinez, in a catchweight fight. Both would be credible opponents. There are others. Let's just hope that if Pacquiao's next opponent is not Floyd Mayweather, it is one of them. There are some intriguing matchups that could be down the road. Absolutely. We'll find out as we're ready now for a look at the HBO sports calendar. Tuesday night on the next Real Sports, we profile Gino Oriema, head coach of the defending national champion University of Connecticut women's basketball team, currently riding an 80-game winning streak. Next Saturday night, lightweight champ Juan Manuel Marquez defends his title against all-action fighter Michael Katsidis. Also on the card, welterweight title holder Andre Berto and Celestino Caballero. December 11th, one of the challengers to 140-pound supremacy, Amir Khan faces the very tough Marcos Maidana. 24-7 returns December 15th, but this time we're taking our cameras on the ice as we follow two of the NHL's top franchises, the Washington Capitals and Pittsburgh Penguins, in the lead-up to their outdoor matchup on New Year's Day in the annual Winter Classic. For four consecutive nights starting December 27th, tune into Boxing's Best of 2010 and relive some of the biggest moments from this year's HBO boxing calendar. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com. From Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, we're getting set for the start of our main event. You ask why are Williams and Martinez fighting for a second time? Well, in December of 2009, they staged a classic battle. Here's a look back. Nearly one year ago, Paul Williams faced off against Sergio Martinez. In less than three minutes, the stage was set for one of boxing's best fights of 2009. And down he goes on a left hand to the temple. Hard right hand, and Williams goes down. And Martinez has even the round. Both fighters tasted the canvas in round one. Early on, Martinez, the quick-handed southpaw, gave Williams all he could handle. Suddenly it appears that for a super slick, fast counterpuncher, Williams has the wrong stop. Another round that I would have to give to Martinez. He landed many more shots. You're not thinking he's taking you out of your element. You're doing everything that you're not supposed to do. But Williams would rally and battle back in the middle rounds. Hard right hook by Williams. The momentum of the fight is shifting. Williams is beginning to be the more threatening of the two. Hard left hand by Williams. Martinez grabs and holds on. Martinez is hurt. Come on, son. Instead of throwing the lead hand, throw the left. Throw the left. All right, son. And now Martinez blocks Williams for the left. And Williams fires back. And they're trading shots. What a savage exchange in the middle of the ring. Amazing. Crowd is standing in honor of two guys who have fought 12 brilliant rounds. In the end, Williams was awarded the majority decision in a fight that begged for an encore. Nearly one year later, their long-awaited return is finally here. Martinez versus Williams is next. And joining us for the call tonight, Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart. And Emmanuel, you look at the first fight. We just saw some of the highlights, and it was fantastic. 
can they do it again tonight? With the exception of the Getty Ward series, very seldom do a rematch be as exciting as the first fight. Usually the fighters say, I'm going to be more intelligent this time. This is an exception. The fact that Sergio Martinez said that he's going to pressure Williams a lot better and a lot more this time than before because he said he gave him too much space and he believes that Williams can fight too good backing up. So he's going to come out and put pressure on Paul Williams. And Paul Williams is the type of guy that has so much fire inside of him, coupled with the stamina and that physical size, that I just can't see him doing it that easy. Martinez has the most talent between the two, best coordination, but the fire and the competitive spirit of Paul Williams may neutralize that. I see it as a great fight. I think it will equal the first fight. I don't really know who's going to win the fight. Manny, I think tonight we have a chance for this rematch living up to the hype between Martinez and Williams. We shift things over now to Max Kellerman and Max before your comments about Martinez and Williams you have to talk about the middleweight division and this they're fighting for supremacy in the middleweight division. It's really easy when you cut through it all. Martinez is the champion. Forget about belts. He's the champion. He beat Pavlik who beat Jermaine Taylor who beat Bernard Hopkins who beat everyone. They're fighting tonight for the same title that Sugar Ray Robinson and Marvin Hagler fought for the real middleweight title. Paul Williams, as you know, owns the win over Sergio Martinez, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in boxing. Dmitry Pirog, a real good young fighter, and Sturm's been a division stalwart for many years now. You know, it's November already. It's getting pretty late, and there's no obvious candidate for fight of the year. I'll give you even money right now that you're about to see it. What other than that is at stake? We do a lot of talking, at least I do, and thinking about Mayweather and Pacquiao, and they're the two best fighters in the world pound for pound, and everyone knows they're not fighting each other. Well, the next two best pound for pound are these two guys, Paul Williams and Sergio Martinez, and they are fighting each other, and the winner of this fight will have universal acknowledgement as the best pound for pound fighter in the world, not named Mayweather or Pacquiao. Can't wait to see it unfold here tonight in Atlantic City Boardwalk Hall. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event here this evening. Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams. Martinez, 35 years of age. You see Williams with the height advantage. He has that in almost all of his fights. Martinez rehydrated on our unofficial scales to 168 pounds. Max, let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first meeting between these two. Well, you can see the numbers really do tell the story in this case. You can see that Paul Williams threw more and landed more, and usually that's all I care about. Who cares about percentage, right? It's who lands more. But in this case, Martinez's higher connect percentage not really demonstrates his superior accuracy. They were the really clean, hard shots landed by Martinez. The fight could have gone either way, and Paul Williams was fortunate that it went his way. Here comes Paul Williams, born in Augusta, Georgia. Now fighting out of Aiken, South Carolina. Says he's much more prepared for the fight this time. Last time, they only had three weeks notice. He says, listen, I know Martinez is going to have his track shoes on. I'm bringing mine as well. He wants to run. I'm going to run, chase him, and chase him down. You know what you loved about the Pacquiao fight that you just saw, people? I mean, Pacquiao's fighting heart, right? The guy loves to mix it up, even when he's boxing. Paul Williams has the same thing. The guy loves to fight, and that's why his fights are so much fun to watch. Manny, you look at Paul Williams, and he's nearly six foot two. He's rangy, he's athletic, but he can take a shot. That surprises you, right, for a tall guy? He's a very unusual man. I hate to use the word when I was talking to him yesterday that he was a freak. But that's what he is to some degree. He's a very unusual man. Usually guys are tall like that. They don't have the best stamina. And he has a 17-inch neck, which is unusual for the guy. And he's listed as 6'1". Believe me, that man is 6'3". I have enough guys I'm with that 6'1 and 6'2". He's an extremely tall man, but 6'2 is definitely out. He's over 6'2". He says it's not going to go all 12 rounds. Look, Paul Williams and Emmanuel was just talking about it. He's not the greatest boxer or the fastest boxer in the world, but he's a pretty good talent. He's got pretty quick hands. He's got pretty good skills. He takes an excellent punch. He takes it to the body just as well, even though he's a string bean. He has an 81-inch reach. He's a southpaw. He throws 100 punches around. Even if one thing doesn't jump out at you other than his size, the package is an extremely difficult one to contend with. And you know what, even though he's a tall guy, he doesn't really fight tall. He's a tall guy, but he don't mind bending down and mixing up the punches a lot. 
And now Sergio Martinez, born in Argentina, fought a lot of the early part of his career in Spain. In fact, when we talked with him yesterday, we asked him about being a champion, the middleweight champion, and he said, it's not that big a deal in Argentina. A lot of people don't know me, but if I can win this fight in convincing fashion tonight, a lot of people are going to know who I am. Well, that's funny. Both these guys, for me as a fan, I'm excited about this fight. So a big hype with the name of Pacquiao last week and Margarita, but this is the fight that I, as a fight man, is looking forward to. Neither one have cultivated a big following in the tank. Type, but still, for the real two fight fans, this is going to be a great fight. Martinez developed into a fantastic fighter later in his career because he started boxing so late in life, you know, compared to most amateur fighters. And so he really didn't become a star fighter until very recently. Should he win this fight, as Emmanuel said, I think his following will increase immediately. He's got those Hollywood good looks. In fact, he's done modeling for athletic shoe companies and he's got a lot of offers on the table to do some more modeling and he says hey my profile will go up if I get an impressive win and he's been barking all week long about he is going to score a knockout here tonight and not leave it in the judges hands time for the introductions as we send it to our ring announcer Michael Buffer Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City, welcome to the famous Atlantic City Boardwalk Hall here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight, DeBella Entertainment and Goose and Tudor Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Aaron M. Davis, Chairman Tony Orlando, WBC President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor Ringside Chuck Williams. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest will be Craig Metcalf, Luis Rivera, and John Stewart, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Earl Morton. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with red, officially weighing 157 and one half pounds. His professional record, 45 victories, including 24 knockouts, with only two defeats and two bouts even. From Quilmes, Argentina, the two-time world champion, the reigning, defending, WBC middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Maravilla Martinez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing lime green trimmed with black, official weight, 156 pounds. As a professional, 39 victories, including 27 knockouts. Only one defeat from Aiken, South Carolina. The challenger, three-time world champion, Paul. The Punisher, Williams. Bobby, you have both received the same instruction. I expect you to obey my commands, keep your punches up, and protect yourself at all times. This is good. Touch gloves and good luck. Good luck. With nothing to get excited about the heavyweight division in this country right now, I hear all the time 
What happened to those great middleweight championship rivalries we used to have in the 80s? This is what happened to them. We might be watching one right now. Close to 5,500 fans at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The rematch. Paul Williams, Sergio Martinez. Let the ride begin as Williams throws the first punch. Remember in the last fight, both men were down in round one. Mandy, what do you look for early? Well, I'm surprised that Williams is coming out so fast. Sometimes he's a slower starter. But like his last fight with Kermit Centron. He's coming out, and to me, he's neutralizing the plans of Martinez because he's been the most aggressive, and Martinez was supposed to be the aggressor. It looks like it's going to be a very well competitive fight. Let's stop this, okay? Okay, let's go. Williams told us, I like rough fights. It excites me. I want people to talk about my fights years to come. Make it a blood fight. You know Martinez is willing. One of the biggest mistakes I had in the first fight I thought that Williams made was he started punches too far back, and Martinez took advantage of by counter punching. But in this fight here, it seems like Williams is fighting a little bit tighter. He's got his distance a little better. Martinez ducks away from that right hook. Williams trying to get a little jab working. I'm right. Walk it out. Referee Earl Morton separates the two. Midway point of round one. Lancing left by Martinez. We are. I stop. Stop. Walk it out. Martinez, great exchange. This is what Martinez said he wanted was to be more aggressive and try to use his shorter oh. arms and be oh, more effective yeah, by like, getting in close. It looks like he's trying to apply his superior technique, but Williams started so fast, Stop. he Hold didn't out. really have the breathing room to do it yet. That's a great assessment because he didn't give him a chance to get into his groove of being aggressive because Williams started challenging him right away. A right and a left by Martinez on the inside. Williams holding. Martinez punching. No feeling out in round number one. Both guys going after each other. Short little left inside from Williams. Martinez blocked most of it. Much more holding in this fight so far than in early in the first fight. Slapping left from Williams. Maybe because they're coming at each other, and so there's just not a lot of room. Side. Martinez has landed some clean punches, but uh, to me, if I was scoring, I'd give the fight round to Williams. And the way it's going, it looks like the fight is going more towards Williams' advantage. Good round, Paul. You're being alert. Your deep breath. Good round, okay? That's what I want you to do. Just let your hands go like you're doing. But give me more head movement, okay? And give me more uppercuts because he, he want to get down underneath everything that you're throwing. You got me? Start up top, come down bottom, and come back up top with everything. You got to have a little respect. Good. His hands is hurting coming from underneath. His hands are hurting. Be patient. Keep working. Be patient. Here you see, here you see Martinez come out and do exactly what he had planned to do was McCrad and Williams, you know, short punches, keeping the distance where his short arms would be more effective. But I don't know if he's going to be able to sustain that for the rest of the fight at the tempo the way that Williams is going. Because Williams is used to fighting at this type of a tempo more so than Martinez. Oh. Martinez is no, more of a thinking type back. fighter. Pull it back. Very Pull intelligent. It. Pull it out. Very crafty. Pull it out. Hold Williams it out. is changing the pace and making him fight a little yeah. faster than he Come wants on. to fight. And as expected, Break. Williams Break. was a little bit busier okay. in round number one. They now landed at back. the same okay, percentage on. according to the comp box. That exchange gets a rise out of the crowd here in Atlantic City. Okay. Come on. 
Now Williams is starting to connect with clean shots. Hey, break! Snap, snap, walk it, walk it, walk it. Yeah, it's gonna be a hole. A lot of hole. Good luck, 10. Oh. It down goes right. Williams. Thank you, the right hand. Right hand. Williams through the left. Williams down. He's not getting up, guys. He's not getting up. is the knockout of the year, if nothing else, a sensational, shocking, one-punch knockout of a normally iron-chinned, top-notch fighter. Give me a score. Weavers is a man with so much on the attack and aggression that he didn't even expect I see the punch. And that's the worst punch in the world, a punch you don't see. Medical staff attending to Paul Williams. And Sergio Martinez emphatic. He was the king tonight as he stops Paul Williams in the second in a stunning knockout. Well, I think he's a star after this performance tonight. And this is what we need in boxing. I'm saying knockouts. We said all of these decisions are good, but they're not as exciting and as, as good for promotion of boxing as a knockout. And we haven't saw too many knockouts lately. Get a, get a stool nearby. Now they're going to get Williams up in stages. Let's listen. Hey, we're going to take a look at how it ends. Yeah. Williams throws a left, but Martinez beats him with the short, left. Shorter punch, yeah, I thought it was a right hook. Shorter, shorter punch. And you know, this is what's so strange about boxing and so great about boxing. Williams was fighting the perfect fight, doing everything right. And just one punch out of nowhere changed the whole result. He never saw the punch. Martinez's left got there first. And Williams was out from the moment the punch hit him. Dr. Dominic Coletta and his staff got into the ring quickly to attend to him. And Sergio Martinez said he was going to knock out Paul Williams. And he lived up to his promise. And he's a star. Twenty-fifth stoppage. Of Sir, for Sergio Martinez as Paul Williams suffers only the second loss of his career. Time for the official time of the stoppage. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Atlantic City's boardwalk hall by way of Caesars Atlantic City, the end comes with one punch at one minute, 10 seconds of round number two, the winner by knockout victory. And still, WBC middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Maravilla Martinez. It was billed as the fight of the year. It turns out to be the punch of the year as Paul Williams gets stopped in round number two. Take a look at the total punches through a round and a half. You see that about even as far as the connect percentage. Obviously, Williams tends to be busier. And then the power punches in the fight. Martinez, 21 of 65. He landed 4 of 16 in that second round. And it was just that one left that did in Paul Williams in emphatic fashion here in Atlantic City. I think stunning just about everybody with how it ended. Let's end it up to the ring and Max Kellerman. Wow. Where did that come from? We had it prepared. It was the product of a lot of work. We worked really hard. You said you were going to start faster this time. You did, but so did he. And it looked like you didn't have room to punch. What changed in the second round? Cambió que mi postura fue de atacar. 
Pero siempre esperando sus errores. But always waiting for his mistakes. Did he make a mistake before you landed that punch? Este, sí, venía muy abierto y me dejaba muchos espacios para golpearlo. Yeah, he was coming in, he was too open, he left me a lot of room to come in and punch him. Okay. We thought this might be a fight of the year. Turns out to be the knockout of the year. You're the middleweight champion of the world. Outside of Pacquiao and Mayweather, there's no argument about pound for pound. You just beat Cintron, no matter what they say. Two fights with Williams, you just knocked him out. You beat Kelly Pavlik. Where do you go from here? Eh, tengo, quiero escuchar ofertas y esperar. <coughs> quiero esperar a ver qué es lo que se viene. Nada más. I want to hear offers and see what comes my way. That's all. What do you want? Que quiero eh, quiero descansar un poquito, saludar a Paul Williams porque es un grande de la historia y, 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 y esperar las próximas ofertas. Quiero esperar y escuchar. I want to rest a little bit. I want to say hello to Paul Williams because he's a great fighter. Hey, Thanks, man. Up, Paul. Do that. Yeah, good Quickly, would you fight? Do you want to fight Mayweather or Pacquiao at a catchweight fight? How low can you go? No tengo problemas si sería cuestión de escucharlo, pero 156 libras puedo darlo sin ningún problema, pero sería cuestión de escuchar ofertas. I would have to hear offers. 156 would be fine, but I would want to hear the offers. Thanks, champ. Congratulations on a sensational knockout. Muchísimas gracias y quiero agradecer a toda la gente que se acercó a ver este combate, a todos los que me hacen sentir su apoyo. Thanks, and I want to thank everybody who came here for the fight, everybody who let me feel their support. A todos los latinos, a todos los españoles, argentinos, y, y principalmente my family, mi familia en Argentina, en Quilmes. All, everybody from Latin America, everybody from Spain, everybody from Argentina, and mainly my family in Quilmes. Congratulations again, champ. Paul, quickly. It's a tough question to ask someone who just experienced what you did, but what happened as far as you know? I don't know, man. This guy caught with a punch, you know. I was coming to bring it a, a real tough fight, you know, saying so he just caught me with a clean shot. Was the fight going according to plan until that point? How did you feel? I felt good, you know, so we were going to make it a tough fight the whole way through, you know what I'm saying? Was, uh, he just caught me with a punch, you know what I'm saying, that I didn't see. But we've seen you caught with punches before. The reason it's such a shock is you're known as having a great chin. We've seen you absorb tremendous shots that you saw and didn't see in the past. Why was this different? I don't know, you know, it's the way the cookie crumbles, you know what I'm saying? He just caught me with one I didn't, I didn't see. Here's the replay. I see it. Paul, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Bob. Well, it's the first time Paul Williams, only the second loss of his career, first time that he's been stopped in a fight. And Manny, when you take a look at what transpired, I mean, we expected maybe a repeat of what happened last year. Paul Williams, we've seen him go down, but we've seen him get up. How stunned are you with the force that Martinez was able to hit him with and finish him? I was surprised, and I think that everything was just timing was perfect, and that's what makes boxing so unique. Wheels was fighting a perfect fight. One punch, the knockout punch reminded me so much of Ricky Hatton when he was knocked out by Manny Pacquiao. You very seldom see those type of knockouts where a guy just goes face down. But in this case, it was a guy who was winning, who was, to, in my mind, was controlling the fight, fighting a perfect fight, and just out of nowhere, one punch. That's what makes boxing so unique from any other sport. It doesn't happen in other sports like that. Manny, just quickly to follow up, because you've trained so many great champions, he told us yesterday at 35, I'm mentally and physically at my peak, because he got a late start in it. Can he get even better? I don't know. He's, I think he's. I think this was just perfect the way it ended the one punch. I thought he was fighting a good fight, uh, and Paul was proud of him, and he landed his great shot. I don't know if he's going to get better. Don't forget, he always said, also said he was only going to fight maybe one or two more fights. He doesn't play it on having a long career in the middleweight division. So I'm quite sure he would be very excited about getting a 
big super fight with anyone, whether it be with Pacquiao or anyone, but it's not too many big fights out there right now, for the most part, unless it would be a Mac Pacquiao or Mayweather, that he's physically maybe too big. Well, it was truly impressive. Max, we turn back to you, and, you know, we thought so much about this great battle in the rematch of last year's controversial majority decision for Paul Williams. What happens now? Well, first, I'm, I'm reminded watching this of something James Tony once said, and since we're on HBO, I can repeat it. James Tony, and I forgot what fight this was because Tony had so many great fights, said, I think it was the Holyfield fight where he was moving up in weight. He said, you got to bring ass to get ass. And that's what Sergio Martinez did tonight. Sergio Martinez, like Devin Alexander against Juan Urango a year ago, like Manny Pacquiao always does, chose the riskier strategy. But it, it had the potential to pay bigger dividends, and we saw it tonight. Rather than stick and move, where he might have the advantage, and maybe make it a long, drawn-out, close fight, he made the calculation that if he punched like he meant it and was willing to take the risk of fighting what looked to be Paul Williams' fight early, he had the potential to do something special. He took that risk. He did something special. He is the middleweight champion of the world. He is the only pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the discussion with Mayweather and Pacquiao, and he deserves everything that's coming his way What right now. It was just a sensational knockout. A remarkable performance from someone that did not start boxing until the age of 20 and did not turn professional until the age of 22. But at 35, Sergio Martinez has hit his mark and in full stride and emphatically here tonight in Atlantic City. 24-7 returns to HBO on December the 15th, but it's with a different twist. It's cool. It's on ice. On Wednesday night, December 15th, the Emmy Award-winning series 24-7 returns to HBO. Only this time, something's different. The show's on ice. It's Crosby! He shoots and scores! For Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins, the sweet taste of Stanley Cup victory in 2009 was replaced by the bitterness of an early playoff exit last spring. Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals, meanwhile, were the NHL's top team a year ago in regular season play, but were bounced unceremoniously from the postseason in the opening round. They are two National Hockey League superpowers in search of the same prize. Led by two budding legends whose talent seems to have no limits. Their clashes in recent years have sparked no shortage of fireworks. And he's got him down. Oh it's no secret. They don't like us and we don't like them. I love them. They're awesome. <laughs> now, as their matchup in hockey's annual New Year's Day outdoor showcase approaches, 24-7 brings you a never-before-seen in-season look at two of hockey's premier franchises. In and out of the rink, all access, no filter. That was sick, Primo. That was a sick move. Oh, whoo! Hopefully we'll forget about cameras and just, you know, be yourself and we'll be able to swear and say fuck. I like to say fuck. If you guys stay out of our way, I'll be fine with it. If you guys start poking cameras in our faces, then we'll have a bit of a problem on our hands. From the Steel City to the nation's capital, and every stop in between, it's 24-7 Penguins Capitals Road to the NHL Winter Classic. Premiering Wednesday, December 15th, only on HBO. Well, if you've missed any part of tonight's telecast, you can catch it in its entirety at the dates and times listed below. Also, go to HBO.com for Ring Life, where you can see more on both Martinez and Williams with new installments to come. Next on HBO, stay tuned for a preview to 24-7 Penguins Capitals, followed by Eastbound and Down. So for our entire HBO crew, I'm Bob Papa saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports. 
on World Championship Boxing. It's a triple feast of fight action on Thanksgiving weekend. For starters, Red Hot Andre Berto is setting the welterweight ranks ablaze. Berto's as fast as they come. And now puts his title and undefeated record on the line against top contender Freddy Hernandez. And for the main course, ring veteran Juan...